Live from Studio 7E in Rockefeller Center, this is Today in New York. Many entrepreneurial success stories start with tales of shunning formal education, just as our next guest did. But few can say they actually went from gang member to millionaire. And entrepreneur Ryan Blair has lived with ups and downs. And Ryan, thanks again for being with us. Your book is titled Nothing to Lose, Everything to Gain. So, you know where to find baby pigeons because I've never found a baby pigeon. They exist. They, how do they exist? I don't. I've only seen grown-up pigeons. I've never seen a baby. Where pigeon. did the grown-up pigeon I've come been, I've from? Seen I've seen baby cats. <laughs> I've seen baby cats. I've seen baby dogs, like puppies. But I've never mm -hmm. seen a baby pigeon. Uh, so they don't exist. I don't think they do. I'm excited to be here with my boy Ryan Blair. We're doing an actual interview, but we wanted to include you guys so you can get as much value as possible. He's in a very passionate state. I don't think you're ever not in a passionate state. Yeah. Um, he's ready to spit some fire. We're gonna try and do some Q&A, so please share this, because it's gonna be very valuable. Share with your people on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. Welcome everybody, welcome young hustlers, entrepreneurs, game changers. I'm excited for this interview, man, for yeah, just not only for what you've done, but who you've became. You are a entrepreneur, a hustler, a philanthropist, an ex-gang member, a creative. I mean, yeah. what aren't you? What am? Oh yeah, that's a good question. I, it's it's I, amazing. Know, by the way, I, I love it when people want, thank you everybody for joining me too. Uh, it's rarely that I'm stumped with the question. Uh, so it's what am I not? You, you've done I mean, it all. I did, uh, I've, I've done, I, 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 no, I haven't done it all by any means. What I'm not, let me think about that though. Tough question. Uh, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not good at a lot of things. Like, I can't give you advice on how to have a happy, successful relationship. <laughs> but you've doubled down on your strengths. Yeah, yeah oh, no, well, I'm learning that stuff and I'm trying to learn it. But like, don't, if you think you're on this Facebook Live uh, because you're gonna learn, you know, how to live happily ever after forever, uh, I am very good at making money, uh, having my art, uh, try, you know, change people's lives. I'm, I'm good at that, those types of things, but I'm absolutely terrible at other things. I, I, I love how vulnerable you are. We're yeah, really yeah. gonna dig deep. So yeah, yeah. I got OCD, like, you, you know. So you, you've inspired me shit. just knowing you for the short period yeah. of time. I wanna talk, people see the books. New yeah. York Times bestselling author. I mean, this has reached millions of people. How many different times have this been translated in different countries? Yeah, Share that yeah, with everyone. Yeah. You know, the coolest thing about, so, I, I started writing, I've been, I'm a writer, right? That's what I see myself first. So I just wanna make sure everybody knows. There's a lot of people out there that, you know, they, they write books because they're trying to make money, or they write books because they're trying to build, get famous, or they write books because, um, you know, whatever, they're passionate about a topic of research. I, I write an emotional narrative about the shit that's happened to me in my life, how I got through it, what I learned in the process. Most of the time, the mistakes that I've made, and then I write about those things. So how many languages? It's in China, uh, uh, Korea, it was a, the number one bestseller in Korea. Uh, Romania, Russia, I mean, all over the world. It's amazing. I mean, I, I, it's blessed and nothing to lose, you know, has, has been, it got published in 2011. And to have a book still on the shelves, a business book today around the world, you know, it, it, is a tribute to the readers out there that needed the message. And then obviously the amount of time that I spend writing, you know, that's what my art is. I spend it's very well known. I posted it on my Snapchat last time yeah. I was here and I got a lot of people, oh, I love that book. No, that's awesome. So they already knew about it yeah. without even talking yeah. about Dude, you. I gotta tell you, that's the only thing I care about is like, I, I just, if people love my writing, it's like, that's the most, the greatest compliment a person could ever give me is like, I loved your book, right? Like that's it, you know, or, or like you're a great father. Like those are the two things as an artist. I just love it when my art makes an impact. Uh, and as a father, I just love it when I, you know, my son grows, you know, I love so it. I've seen it. you with your son. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you light up. Yeah, he's my everything. So people see you. They yeah. see Ryan Blair. They see you on all the news stations. You've been on some of the biggest publications, yeah. Forbes, Entrepreneur, and a lot of entrepreneurs, especially maybe the ones that haven't had everything given to them. Maybe they're struggling. They just see you as this huge success. They have no clue, a lot of them, what it took to get there. Yeah. So let's go back yeah, yeah, before sure. you were the Ryan Blair everyone knows, the best-selling author, the multi-millionaire, the guy that made two billion, started one of the most amazing companies. 
Let's take <laughs> let's take them back yeah. before. Yeah, yeah um, sure. Yeah, let's let's say 14, 15. How, who was the Ryan Blair growing up? How'd yeah. you grow up? Well, yeah, there's no secrets uh, uh, to success, but there are a whole lot of life hacks that I've learned along the way. That can cut someone else's learning curve in half. Yeah, I, I spent $2 billion before. learning what not to do, right? You talked about it before. You yeah. said, yeah, I've made millions, but I've also lost a lot. And oh, I'm yeah. Bankrupt, and that sucks. Yeah, I mean, bankruptcy was a shittiest problem. I write about that in Rock Bottom to Rockstar. I had sold Sky Pipeline when I was 24 years old for 25 million bucks. And then I thought, you know, I, I made it. I thought I was, you know, Diddy. And next thing you know, you know, I'm buying bottle service and I'm just spending tons of money, you know, compete, competing with Diddy. And, uh, and I went broke and that was a humbling experience. And then I decided from that point on that I would never do that again. And so I, I know about- Do you feel like you needed that moment? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, you know, you learn more from failure. Pain is a good thing. People, you were asking like people that, um, see what people don't realize is, is I fail my, and everybody talks, oh, fail forward and all that, those buzzwords and shit like that. They never actually have had a failure, like a bankruptcy or been to prison or, you know, had a, had a rock bottom moment that they did to themselves. They got themselves in that they will take responsibility for and then get the hell out of that hole that they, you know, they've dug themselves into. Now we've had rock bottom moments like, you know, financial disaster with the, the recession. I went through that. You know, my mother was in a coma for two years right after falling down a flight of stairs i've had my stepfather and love of my, my angel died in my arms unexpectedly and i fed him his last meal and I closed his eyes on him right like i've, I've had friends commit suicide i've had you know, my sisters in prison my brothers have been in prison my dad disappeared at 13 years old i used to run with gangs all that shit, right that's those are some rock bottom moments some of which i had control over some of which i was influenced into and i didn't know it some of which, you know, uh, were circumstances I had no control over, right? Like it just happened, I had no choice. And you, so you've, and that's, I mean, very inspiring because people, a lot of people don't know those certain things yeah. that have caused you to have the hunger that you yeah. have now. So talk about when you feel like you got into entrepreneurship. You, yeah. you said yeah, you were yeah, selling yeah, since yeah. you were younger. Yeah, uh, you know, so compensation drives behavior. And, and uh, my dad taught, my dad would reward me before he disappeared with, with, with compensation if I did a good job. Like if I got a base hit after, uh, uh, you know, the game he'd uh, buy me a batting glove uh, so he'd make me do chores around the house and he'd pay me a dollar per bag of weed so I, I got money motivated really early so I, I had a lemonade stand when I was like I had two paper routes a lemonade stand I'd have a wad of hundred dollar bills on me when I was in sixth grade and that was before I started you know hustling and, and running with gangs and then you know I'd have you know I was a I was a I was doing well as a kid when I was running in a gang because I used to steal computers and that's how I learned computer hacking and you know hacking skills I guess I should say say how to tear apart a computer and that type of stuff so, so was there like a, a rock bottom moment when you were a teenager that caused you to use the sales skills from negative stuff to positive did you go yeah. all in on something positive yeah or how yeah yeah well no so my uh it was a god thing man like i i was um i i knew i was going to prison um I was I would work out every single day and I got big 260 pounds because I when I was a fighter and you know I, I was in a highly Latin environment and I was an enforcer for a gang and that meant that I fought every single day most of the days I, and I broke this hand five times on uh, in fights yeah, yeah yeah the knuckles and and I you know I, I still am a fighter I still do Muay Thai and I, I don't you know I don't I don't fight uh, uh, you know uh, idiots and stuff like that I fight you know a punching bag now. Um, but yeah, man, I, I've been through it all, I, I, you know, I, but I'm a fighter. I've learned how to fight my way through things and I learned how to learn. And, and now I try not to fight my way through things. I try to get there, you know, without as much friction, but friction is part of the process. So I, I've had a lot of friction in my life and that's given me a lot of, you know, like energy. And as a result of that, so you, you were, were doing negative things, selling, stealing, but then you put all of that energy to a positive. Yeah, I made it, you uh, sold your first no, I, no I, I made a deal with God. So uh, my, my mother started dating a guy and I had planned to rob him. Uh, you know, that's what we did. We robbed people and he was rich. And you know, in the neighborhood I grew up in, you were a target if you were rich and you came across you know, the tracks to my side of the tracks, right? And I went to his house one day because he invited me over and he left his safe open as I walked by. He had no idea, because I don't look like, you know, I, you know I, 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 I don't look like I'm gonna rob you, right? I, you know, but the people I ran with were tough people. And I saw the safe open filled with millions in cash, millions. Jeez. And I sat there and I thought to myself, this is the test. If I rob this man, my mother's Cinderella story could be over. 
I could just completely, I mean, I could have taken that money and been on an island and been gone, right? I had that capability. And I said, God, I know what you're doing. You're giving me this test. If this is my way out of poverty, if this is my mother's way out of that, you know, she, I used to have to worry about her getting shot in a drive-by shooting because my sister's best friend was murdered in a drive-by shooting, you know, on my blog. I'd worry about my mom getting shot. So I was like, if I don't have to worry about my mom, if I'm gonna be able to get out of poverty or learn how to get out of poverty, I'll spend the rest of my life in, in gratitude and of service to you, and I will give it all back, one way or the other, right? And so when I made that deal, and I didn't know it at the time, but I got a handshake, I guess. And every time in life that I've strayed from that deal, you know, not intentionally, but you know, you develop habits, and sometimes they take you away from your purpose or your commitment. Every time I've strayed from that deal, you know, God's given me a swift reminder. So Interesting. that's why I'm here teaching right now. And that's why I write the books and so, that's why I give I back. I look at these books and it gives me, it, it inspires me because this is not you like, what can I write about to, to motivate people? This is like your life yeah. and, and what you've gone through, your experiences. This is it's you. It's practices, it's principles, it's values, it's, it's process, it's, it's how I got there. What I liked going through yeah. this, by the way, is you could go to any chapter and you could read from there and it gives you value. You obviously want to read through everything. Yeah. There's a lot of tactical stuff. Yeah, there's a very, yeah. I'm, so I'm a, as a writer, one of the other things is like when a person says, I, I, I got a call from a guy named Fat Man Scoop. And he's like, I, I got on a plane to go to Germany. And I bought your book because it's like, you know, some white boy, some gang member. Let's, yeah. let's, see, let's see about this white boy gang member, right? Maybe it'll put me to sleep is what, the way he described it. Scoop, if you're out there, that's kind of how you described it. And he said that he couldn't put it down and he didn't get to sleep on his flight to Germany. And he said he never reads books cover to cover. And, uh, and, and like, that's the compliment of a writer. Now, how you do that is one, you got, you know, you don't, want, don't write a book unless you want to be a writer, unless you love writing. Like, don't, don't uh, you know, you know, write a book uh, and put another piece of, you know, literature out there that's just crap. You know what I mean? We got two million books being written a year. Um, and it's easy to publish a book even yeah. if the guy's not a proven results yeah. type of guy. Yeah, and, and, and if you love writing, fantastic, that's great. Or if you've got a message you got to get out, that's fantastic. But, you know, I'm an artist, right? You know, but that said, I, I respect a lot of people that write books and they write them uh, because they want to have their name, you know, out there every 90 days or they want PR. You know, Brian Tracy's an animal. He writes books every 90 days. I've met, I've met him, spent time with him. I ain't write a book every 90 days. I don't have something important to talk about every 90 days worth you spending 20 bucks and me trying to write 100 <laughs> <laughs> words about it, right? Like a hundred thousand words every ninety days. Like I, I, you know, there's not enough shit in the world to write about. Um, you know, that in business. That so, um, it, yeah. I mean, we have so. Yeah, much go ahead. Keep going, man. Whatever you want to talk so about. So you talked about too. There's a couple things here. When we met um, a while back, like one of the, within ten minutes of knowing you, you talked about how one of your biggest goals this year is how much you want to give away, yeah. not how much you want to make. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a big perspective. Yeah, shift. yeah. A lot yeah. of people are worried about making money. You're trying to give it away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, so. Long process. Yeah. Well, no. So, uh, look, it's very simple. And there's some, there's, uh, you know, whatever religion a person is, there's a lot of biblical, spiritual, and, and then scientific, um, uh, you know, laws about reciprocation. And the more value you create, the more that you're able to receive, right? And so I just try to create as much value as I possibly can, and it comes back to me. So I never focus on the money. If I, when I find myself focusing on money, like I have an income goal, I never get it, right? Never. It's like almost like and I know how to make money, but if I focus on something else other than money, I get the money. So what I focus on now, and my, you know, now that I don't need money, and, and the other day I was, uh, I'm writing my next book, and I was thinking like. My sons, 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 sons will never have to work a day in their lives if, if, if I choose to, to uh, leave that money to them. And I probably won't unless they figure out a way to earn it or they figure out a way to be a part of my foundation that helps give it away. Because I don't believe in multi-generational wealth. Like, I believe you got to earn it. I believe our society gave me an opportunity to earn it. I should die uh, having given my son the best possible life and, and having transferred these learnings. And then, you know, so he's you know, got whatever he needs. And then the rest should go to charity and go right back to the very society that gave me this shot. Because only, in, you know, I, I wouldn't have had the same shot if I was born in a, another country, you know, perhaps it was, in, you know, going through a tragedy of war, or if I was born in Syria, I wouldn't have the same opportunity even if I had the same capacity, but I got the opportunity, and so it's my requirement, you know, my duty 
to teach other people how to do it and to do everything I can to make sure other people do the same thing and overcome their same obstacles. Otherwise, I'm not living you know, my life's purpose. They should be teaching this in college. Yeah, no, you, you I, 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 listen, I, I ended up dropping out of high school my ninth, in ninth grade. I'm dyslexic. I have ADD. That, that's going to be very obvious to everybody out there. Um, I was, I was, my son has autism. I probably have it too. I don't like, I don't enjoy making eye contact. I, uh, uh, I prefer to be by myself. I could spend five days alone if it weren't for, you know, my son and some other responsibilities. I'm, I'm, I have more fun by myself. That said, the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the reason why I give it all away and, and my income strategy is very simple. I want to give away $50 million this year. That means I got to make a hundred million dollars, right? So if I focus on how am I going to give away $50 million, my it. subconscious will focus on how to make it. it. As long as giving away that money gives me more fulfillment and like, you know what I mean? And, and more pleasure than earning it, right? Because I don't get pleasure out of earning money. Like if you told me I'll pay you hundred grand to give me 10 hours of your time, which people do all the time, you know, I, I'm, uh, uh, I, I mean, if, if I was going to receive some other value and I knew that it would increase my impact, I would take it. But I turn down speeches every single day around the world where I'm like, I, I, as much as I'd love to, I'd rather spend that time helping people at scale with your son, with my son. I just heard you say yeah. that you want to spend all day tomorrow with him. No distraction. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Oh, you know, I, I didn't have a father. So being a father is very important to me, but so time is a zero sum game. Everything I, every minute I spend away from my son and my mom is now on hospice. So I don't have much more with her and I got big businesses and my, my venture fund hashtag one has got some very prominent, big investments and in big companies that are doing really well. So everything I, every, every minute I spend away from those activities cost me something. But the thing that gives me the most fulfillment other than teaching my son is teaching other people's children, right? Children that have, that are, that are just like me or they're poor or they don't have a dad that's gonna, like I teach my son entrepreneurship at the table. Today I asked him how many zeros, how many zeros are in a billion dollars? That's a test out there, everybody. How many zeros are there in a billion dollars? Most people don't know this, right? My seven-year-old son with autism, right? That, you know, and he's learning and we're working on this can tell you how many zeros are in a billion. And when he went to school, none of the other kids knew that, right? Now I teach him about money and I teach him about this stuff, right? Because money is fundamental to survival and to security, right? Freedom to education, choices. to your health. He's got autism without money. How would I be able to give him the tutors, the, 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 the nutrition, the health, all the stuff, the therapy, you know, all that stuff. How, my mom cost me $1,500 a day to live that I have to pay for, for her, her caretakers. And it's cost me that every day for six years. That requires a lot of money, yeah. right? So if you don't have money, well, guess what? You might have to pull your, the plug well, on a loved one. There's a lot of people one. in society that say, oh, don't worry about money, people are greedy. And I, I don't yeah. understand, because yeah. a lot of them don't have money, yeah. so maybe it's, maybe it's a, a, an insecure no, it, thing. No, it's a, or, yeah, no, I mean, that's just, it's, it's just, yeah. Well, so one, it, it's a cop out, yeah. right? So it's like. They'd rather say that than make it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, no, it's like, it's like, uh, I don't like playing basketball. Uh, basketball just sucks. No, you just can't play basketball, not good. right? Follow me, like, if I'm not good at basketball, I'm not gonna criticize basketball. Like, people that are not good at money criticize money. Right? It's kind of like not being good at basketball. So you're saying you need money. You need to have a skill to learn how to make money, multiply it, but also giving it away gives you a lot of fulfillment. I feel yourself, I feel like that, oh, money doesn't matter, is a selfish thing. If you have the capacity and the talent to make money and the opportunity afforded to you by this society, it is your duty under God or oath or otherwise to make it, just give it away if, if you don't like it. But if you can make it and you don't, then how are you gonna take care of those people that have no capacity? You know, a child that, that's born with uh, no ability to ever make money, you gotta do as much as you can to carry your weight plus others in our society. It does. That's what, no, you gotta, right? Otherwise, uh, otherwise, all we got is a bunch of takers and our society continues to fail. Mm -hmm. And so if you got a bunch of people that are entrepreneurs, they're taking them, making their own jobs and then helping other people make jobs, taking care of their own families, taking care of their health, preventing health-related challenges, then you improve society. What I've seen Sorry. in, in no, I love it. <laughs> About to, I'm running for president, ladies and gentlemen. That's what that sounded like We're not right there. Into politics <laughs> yeah. today. Not, well, I won't tell you which side I'm running, but I will one We're day be involved politics, in politics. Kidding, that's funny. Yeah. So what I've seen from you that I want to get out to the millennial generation yeah. because there's a lot of people that have a rough past, but they use that as a crutch yeah. and they use that as why they're not succeeding. Yeah. You have turned your adversity. You know what Eminem said back in the day? You love Eminem. Yeah, hell yeah. Really, hell yeah. Or last time I was here. 
He says, the moment I used my adversity to my advantage, my career exploded. Yeah. He thought his adversity, his mom's drug issues, he thought it was all bad and he was, he was oh, hiding no. it. Yeah, no, it's... Right when he got it out there yeah. and became humble and, and yeah. vulnerable, yeah. he said it exploded. Yeah. So you talk yeah. about your past yeah. and use it as fuel to become successful. What do you tell the people out there that have had the rough past, that are going through challenges that want to succeed? Yeah. So for one thing is, I, I always say, there's somebody who's got it worse than I've ever had it. And I, I've met those people. You know, I, I've, I've served in, in orphanages, in, 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 in war-torn countries, feeding kids that they, they, they got it worse than me. I've met, I've met people that had to watch their parents get slaughtered and their whole family get slaughtered in a genocide. I've not had to experience that. So get over your own story, right? Now I have a story that I love telling because it helps liberate other people from theirs. And the reason why I put it in a book, right? I didn't have to uh, you know, tell everybody I was a gang member. My record was expunged because I was a juvenile delinquent, right? I did that because I, I wanted, in a way, to liberate myself from my story. I wanted to impact other people from my story. And I'm not caught up in my story because someone else has got it worse. So you just got to realize there's somebody that's got a lot worse than you. So quit, you know, quit being a little baby and, you know, and, and get your shit together and, and, and read books, educate yourself, surround yourself with different people, take different actions, make a commitment. Whatever the hell you got to do, do it. But I will agree with Eminem on this. Because I've been through adversity, I don't have as much fear. Right? I've, fa I've, somebody, I've been shot at. I've faced the flash of a muzzle. Like, it, it, entrepreneurship's not gonna, no. you know, gonna kill me. You might right? get tired, you might have embarrassment, yeah. but you're not gonna have someone yeah. pull it. I don't think not so. Gonna have, I'm not gonna have my, my, my best friend murdered in front of me. I mean, that's amazing. I hope not. I mean, God willing, you know, God willing, I should say, I hope that doesn't happen to me, but if it does, I know how to handle that. Because you've been through I've it. I've been through it. So what do you tell someone, here's the other side of the spectrum. I feel like, I've trained quite a bit of millennials, yeah. and I feel like sometimes when people have a perfect past, they don't have the hunger and they yeah. have a different issue. Yeah. For me, it, it was similar where I grew up okay, yeah. uh, but when I went dead broke, when I was embarrassed, when I felt like I let everyone down, when I was struggling and discouraged and, and down and out, like yeah. my back was against the wall, that's when I developed this yeah. hunger. Yeah. So it's nothing to lose. Yeah, haven't nothing pushed to lose. themselves yeah. enough yeah. to have a lot yeah. of hunger. Yeah. You have more hunger than I've seen in a lot of people yeah. because of your past. Yeah, yeah. Well, and now I, I, I got to tell you, I have, to, I have to constantly trick myself to be hungry, you know, especially now. Yeah, now. It was really easy. So I was going to I was gonna call my next book Everything to Lose, but then I realized well, there's not a whole lot of people out there that, that can identify with having That's everything true. to lose. So they ain't going to sell a lot of books, right? But going from nothing to lose to having everything to lose is a whole different set of experiences. Having everything to lose, I mean, you got, I have a, you know, I have a son. I've got uh, responsibilities, right? So I, I now have to trick myself into feeling like I have that nothing to lose attitude, into, into motivating, into self-motivating. And everybody has to trick themselves into doing that, right? So whether you're comfortable in the middle class, you've had it perfect, you were a rich kid, you came from a rich family, you're poor, whatever, you gotta find methods to trick yourself and then keep yourself consistently with whether it be hung, whatever you're lacking, like I, I don't like uh, hunger, or I don't like a, a thirst for knowledge and education, or action. I don't action. I don't lack you know I don't lack that, so I don't have to, but I have to constantly practice that skill, or I'll get rusty at it. So what are some, ta let's talk tactics and strategies yeah, yeah. now. What are some tactics for people? It, it sounds so bad to stay motivated because it's like you. It, I don't stay motivated by the way, it's all, I, not I'm. Not you, yeah. and people in yeah. general. I'm not motivated every day. So, I, so what are some tactics? How do yeah. you trick yourself? What are some things that you do or that you've taught people? Cause you've trained thousands of yeah, millions yeah, yeah. of people. Yeah, millions. So anyone out there that has the idea, they have the, they feel like they have the hunger, but maybe yeah. they're procrastinating, they're not taking action, not motivated. What are some strategies that you've used? Yeah, you know, it depends. There's all kinds of different personalities types to, to get there and I, I too have had a lot of time where I've, I've been unmotivated like there's times where you know when you have when I you know when you have your own jet and you got all the shit it's really easy to say you know what I'm just gonna lay in bed all day yeah. and sometimes I have right I'm not I'm not perfect I don't do it every single day the tactics that, that I use uh, are, are relatively simple if I'm feeling down and out and depressed about something you know my girlfriend broke up with me or whatever shit like that happens to all of us uh, I, I have to change my environment, uh, so I get out of that environment. So like, like the thing what I do when I when I start to feel a little bit like low is I'll go serve, like I'll go help some kids somewhere. I'll grab someone and tune them up, give them a quick education. Like like what I'm doing right now with you guys out there is like this is motivating me. This lifts me up. Like I'm not I'm gonna rise to the occasion if I got somebody that I'm helping and I can help them, and I'm I'm not gonna uh, let them down, but I'll let myself down. 
I, you know, I'm driven by commitment, right? So I, I use those different tactics. I learned the hard way though. I got depressed for a while and, and I thought, man, am I, am I suffering through depression? And I found the cure for it for me, which was I just went out there, I, went, I joined a, with an organization called Junior Achievement, which teaches um, entrepreneurship to kids. So you help people worse off than I just went to Compton, went to Emerson Elementary School, got in that room, and I was like, these kids have never even heard of entrepreneurship. These kids don't, these kids don't know that the radio that they listen to, and the beats, and the rappers, and the rap stars, and everything around them is created by entrepreneurs. And so they're being manipulated in, in, into becoming consumers of content and of, of other, by entrepreneurs. And I'm like, I'm gonna go help them. And then I realized, wow, you know, I, I have something to give to people. And when you have something to give to people, then it, it gives you something back, right? So you have to learn how to fill up your, your, your energy. You have to learn what your purpose is. And now that I really am clear in what my purpose is in life, I know when I'm off purpose. And my friends know. And I've, I have a support system. I surround myself with people that are willing to tell me, yo, that was a low level shit you did yesterday. Or maybe it's, you. Oh, yeah, or maybe it's time, you know, maybe you gotta slow it down a bit. My, my uh, assist, uh, assistant of four years, she's the chief of staff uh, of my company, she says, pump your brakes, Ryan. That means rest up, means recharge, right? Uh, for a while, I didn't learn how to pump Stop my brakes. Yeah, doing. just pump your brakes, like pump them a bit. And I, and I you do. Get intense. I do. I, I get on run. I'm a sprinter. So you also have to know your, your energy levels. I sprint and then I recharge. I sprint and then I recharge. Some people are marathon runners, right? So I want to, and I know you guys don't yeah. want to end, but I yeah. want to simplify it. For all the people watching, it's not about, guys, more information and more content. What can you leave them with where you could simplify where right now they can go take action on something, or they can execute something um, when they leave? Like, what's yeah. the one thing that they should focus on to really better their lives? Because you went from gang member, struggling, broke, discouraged, to an amazing, how many How many stories is this, six? I mean, I, I've got, I, got, I got 50 homes, man. But how many stories? I, I don't know. It's, it's like five stories in the Hollywood Hills. The view is exceptional. Um, they want to live that way a lot of yeah. them, they, or they just want security. So what's the one thing they should do right now to help them? Uh, you know, I, it depends on what your, your issue is, but so we all have, I, I, I just, I'll break it down in a couple categories. So you have an issue of, do, if you have a product to sell, Right? What you should do right now is contact somebody this second and go sell that product. Right? So that. if you already have a product to sell, so tactical, if you're already in business it. and you, you know, I, oh, that's real simple. It's like, I, what's getting in the way is you picking up the phone and not being afraid of it, not being afraid of rejection and overcoming it. Now, some sometimes there's methods to do that. For example, like if I'm in the room with you, right? I'm not gonna and, and I'm like, ah oh, man, I'm having a sales challenge right now, and I call in front of you. I'm gonna be at my best. And if I tell you, yo, I gotta make a sales call. Do you mind? And I know you're listening on that call, I'm gonna be at my best. So I try to put myself in environments, you know, where I'm gonna be at my best and have other people rise my, my game, right, my game. So that's one. Uh, two is, uh, uh, you, you know, everybody knows what to do. They just don't do it. Like weight loss, for example. Most people out there, I would argue, you know how to lose weight. You pretty much know the components of it. It's diet, it's exercise, it's sleep. There are some genetic aspects of it, right? You can learn about that online. You can figure it out but you just don't take the actions. So most people just don't know what not to do. They know what to do. So I'm gonna tell you this, my most ex best advice I could ever give an individual, and I, I don't think I've ever written about this or said it, learn what not to do. We all know what to do. If you have a sales problem, you make telephone calls, right? If you have a marketing problem, you read marketing books. You know what to do. You're just, you're just not doing it. So the reason why you're not doing it is because you're doing some things that you should not be doing. Like you should not be on Instagram all day. You should not be caught up in you know what's going on in all this politics because I ain't gonna help you build your business. Or you should not be uh, spending time with you know friends that aren't thriving and, and, and growing you and, and developing you and, and lifting you. You're spending time with other friends. So just write up a list of all the things you're committed not to do, and the to do things will start to be done. Love it. You guys heard it first yeah. from the guy. Yeah. Ex gang member to two billion dollars. I love it. I appreciate yeah, thank your time, you. man. Hey, thank everyone out there. I love you guys. I appreciate your book reviews. It means a lot to me. Uh, it, also, I have a documentary on YouTube for free, Nothing to Lose, which uh, basically covers. Uh, after I dropped this, I had cameras rolling, and as I was writing this, uh, uh, you know, uh, I suffered a lot of adversity, but I got a lot of wins. And I put the documentary out there for free, so that way people can learn and kind of, you know, have some eyes on me and see the process. Uh, I appreciate you guys very much. I love you very much. Comment here if you want me to do any more of these. Comment here. You know, I haven't done them in a long time uh, because I got to see evidence that people are learning, man. So if they don't comment, I can't help. Yep.
You guys, thanks again for tuning in. And yeah. uh, we, uh, we might do your questions in a little bit. But yeah, I, yeah. I, we, we didn't have time for Q&A because we got some other rock stars coming over here, guys. We will be back. Comment. And uh, I'll lean in on some of the threads. I love you guys very much. God bless you. Thank you, guys. Myth. What do, you, what do you think makes that book different than all the other books out there? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's crazy because I spent $2 billion writing this book. You know, in this book, I'm going to tell you what not to do. I've, I've, I've made billions of dollars. I've lost a lot of money. Gratefully, I've kept a bunch of it. I'm going to teach you what they don't teach in business school. And if you ever want to make a billion dollars, this is probably uh, the cheapest 20 bucks or whatever it is uh, to learn how not to lose a billion dollars as you make a billion dollars. Let's give it away free. I mean... Up to you, Peter. If you want to give it away for free, they got to do something for it, right? Let's no, do it. There's no free rides in this house, is there? Nope. All right, so Peter, who am I signing this to? Whoever wins. Whoever wins? I mean, if you're a winner, I got to sign something special, right? Yep. All right. I can't, I mean, I can't just do the standard signature. The path is math. And that's what I teach people. To Peter. Whoever you tell me to send this to. Perfect.